Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Bluebeam Tips and Tricks webinar, Document and Compare. To start with, I have a couple of updates. Because this is a public presentation, we will have all mics muted. If you look at your GoTo control panel, you will see a question box and a chat box. Enter any questions you may have during the presentation in either box, and we will answer them at the end during Q&A. We are Zentech Consultants, a technology consulting firm providing innovative technology solutions to the Canadian CAD BIM construction marketplaces. Our focus is to improve efficiencies, which in turn leads to increased productivity. I am Steve Fahey, based in Halifax. I manage our Canadian operations. I invite you to visit our website to learn more about our company and our offerings. Also, don't forget to follow Zentech Consultants CA on LinkedIn to stay up to date on our upcoming webinars. We offer a wide range of Bluebeam training, online live courses, private courses, custom courses, and on-demand courses. Please visit our website or contact me directly to learn more. I'm pleased to have David Mills joining me today. David has an extensive background implementing and supporting technology in the construction management field. He has written numerous articles and blogs and delivered training on Bluebeam and Procore. We are happy to have David and his experience on our team. At this time, I will hand the presentation over to David. Hey, Steve, thanks for introducing me. Give me one minute while I share my screen here. I see it. Perfect. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be actually talking about document comparison, right? Uh, what is document comparison? Well, the old way was, you know, you had two different drawings or two different documents overall. It doesn't even have to be drawings. And you would simply look at one on one side of your desk and the other one maybe on a second side of your desk. Um, obviously, as technology has evolved, uh, evolved and practices in the workplace has made uh, finding changes easy, uh, particularly with revisions within AutoCAD and Revit and other programs. Uh, it's made our jobs a lot easier to look at differences. However, sometimes we receive a document, uh, whether that be a drawing, a contract or whatever, and it may have changes. And we don't know if it has changes or not because none of them are clouded um, or it may be missing some clouds as well. So Bluebeam can actually compare two different documents um, and tell you where the differences are at. So right now on my screen, I just have two different drawings up, uh, one from a Bulletin 1 set and one from the Bulletin 2 set. Um, exact same drawing, uh, pending the changes. So the easiest way to do our document compare is if we go up to document right up here, and about halfway down, we do have our compare documents. Um, and all it is is simply clicking whatever our first document is. So I'm going to be looking at document, uh, my bulletin number one here. And bulletin number two is going to be my document number B. We could change this uh, saved location because what Bluebeam does is it'll actually make a, a new document altogether um, with those red bubbles on them that we are familiar with. So I just want to make sure this is being saved in the right location. Yep. Um, now, this manual alignment, I'll show you an example of this in a momentarily. Uh, but what this section is really going to be for is if you have a drawing where the model uh, has moved a little bit, um, that's what you would do the pick points for. And again, it's this little third one. I can't unfortunately switch tabs right now. Uh, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then the last thing we have is some of our, our split screen views. Um, and I'll show you what that is like when we go to it. And then we have some advanced properties. We're not going to get too far into the advanced properties today. 
But we're going to click on OK. That's all it is. Uh, depending on how many documents you are comparing, uh, this can take anywhere from five seconds, as you just saw, uh, upwards to several hours. Uh, I have done a, a thousand page uh, comparison, comparing you know two one thousand page drawing sets, and it took me about three hours on my laptop. Um, so if you do have one of those larger types of files, I highly recommend. Uh, you kind of do it towards the end of the day. Uh, you know, start it at 5 o'clock or 4.30 as you're, as you're getting ready to walk out the door. Uh, just have it run in the background while you are, uh, you know, commuting back home. Um, or again, like I said, before you have a major meeting, uh, you know you're not going to be using your computer for a little bit because it does bog down the processes on your computer. Uh, so here we have the final results of just doing just one page. Um, and you'll see that Bluebeam automatically put us into a split view. And this split view over here has bulletin number two with the differences highlighted. And on my right side of my monitor, I have bulletin number one. Uh, we can move these around if you'd like. Uh, I'm just going to leave them how they are just for this demonstration. And automatically, we have again our syncing uh, which again is another feature of bluebeam and when you zoom in or pan around it's going to move between each of these automatically so our first change with bulletin number two right here is we added some desks right and it looks like something happened over here with these lines you know something you know maybe this is a mistake by the architect or engineer this wasn't supposed to happen uh, so you can catch mistakes like that so again, it works for line work. Um, again, it looks like if we zoom in right here, they remove some desks as well. And got a handicap sign down here and some ADA spaces. And it also looks at text. Now, one thing that document compare will not do uh, is look at markups. Uh, so if I had marked up one of my drawings with, with text notes, whatever it may be, uh, a square to highlight a certain room, uh, it's not going to actually be looking at those markups uh, when it's doing the comparison. It's only going to be looking at the content of the PDF, the actual the line work um, and all of that. Uh, and again, we can do this not just with drawings. We can do this with contracts, uh, legal documents, uh, to see if certain words have been modified. Uh, we can do this with schedules, um, tables, do it with basically anything as long as it's a PDF. Uh, the only thing I have, don't recommend to do it with is an actual image. Uh, it will not look for the differences, the a correct way if you want to compare two different images. So just be aware of that. Uh, now we can simply close out of this right view over here um, because we don't need this anymore for our syncing and the rest of our demonstration. Just so I could keep this nice and large for us. Now by default, Bluebeam automatically adds these clouds and it actually locks them for us so we cannot actually move these um now we could simply uncheck our lock box uh lock check box here and continually you know modify certain colors if we need to uh, however i would highly recommend you just leave it locked so things do not get um adjusted one a little bit of a down, I don't want to say it's a downside, it's just something you need to be aware of, is it looks at every single pixel on this drawing. Um, every single pixel it looks at. So if you have a new drawing and it may have added just one or two pixels and you may not even be able to see them being fully zoomed out, you just see a red circle around it. Um, that is one of those scenarios where you can click unlock you know, maybe this line right here, this is just a mistake. It's not an actual change per se. Um, 
I want to just delete that, right? Because this is a just an enlargement line for a you know for this floor plan for to look at an enlargement. View. However, this area that we have right here may be a little bit cause of a concern um, on this particular comparison because maybe there's supposed to be a door right here or a window um, that never got added into the final set. It was just, hey, they cut out this wall right here. Uh, we can also do this with multiple documents as well and multiple page PDFs. Uh, just to save a little bit of our time, like I said, I've already done just this one page. It's only one page in this uh, this example right here. Uh, however, if we go up to our batch, and a lot of the batch tools are only in the last uh, license of Bluebeam, the complete or extreme editions, if you're on the previous licensing model. Um, so you may not have this available to you. Uh, but we could actually go to our batch uh, compare documents function. And this is a little bit different uh, where you actually would add in our files here should you need to. Uh, I'm just going to do the simple one real quick. Um, you would add in your documents. And one thing we could actually search or, or start matching it by again this is for those 200 300 pages uh because if you do the previous method one by one you're going to take it's going to take a lot of time of your own manual time um we could actually have it automatically start matching pages based on certain criteria um and we would just click on match pages and it would run in the background uh while we do other things Again, when you're doing a lot of these Bluebeam processes, it depends on your computing power, how many pages you're doing. Uh, so again, I just want to put that as a forewarning to people. Uh, it can bog down your system. And you're not going to be able to use Bluebeam also while it is you know, doing its, its processing. Um, so the batch tool is that. Now, this document I have here, this is actually the same thing. Uh, however, when we're talking about doing those match points, let's switch back to that real quick. Um, this pick points option here, this is where you'd want to use that. As you can see, this elevation, not this elevation, this enlarged floor plane is kind of in this top left of this drawing. However, in this one, it's in the bottom right. So when Bluebeam is going to do a comparison between these two, um, it's not going to be able to give you an accurate comparison because again, it's looking at the pixel in this top right corner and matching it with whatever pixel is in this top right corner. And you're not going to see it. Bluebeam sees that there is no pixel there. Uh, so that's when you actually get into the pick points feature. Uh, let me see if I, where is it at here? Docu compare documents. Um, and it'll tell you, hey, you're going to want to choose three different points. Now, I would highly recommend looking at column lines uh, if you're doing a drawing. Uh, column lines are, are typically your best bet uh, to do so, uh, mainly because they're in the same spot. Um, they don't change on a building per se, or at least they shouldn't uh, if you're doing a major revision. Um, if column lines do change, try to find something that is the same between those two drawings. In this particular example, you know, if I did a little uh, square right here, if I marked it right here, I would also want to mark that same pick points on this drawing as well over here. So a little bit confusing. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to uh, with the pick points function. However, that's where you want to have a good relationship with your architect uh, or engineer or whoever else is doing any type of line work drawings for you. Um, definitely work with them uh, just so they do not change any of the models around on the plan when they do go to transfer it from AutoCAD or Revit into a, a PDF uh, because it's just going to make your life harder at the end of the day. Um, or needlessly no reason at all. Uh, but other than that, 
Um, I think we have a couple of questions. Uh, Steve, do you want to send a, tell me what those questions are real quick? Yeah, the first one is, uh, is there a way to change the color of the bubble? Uh, I saw that yours was red with an orangey infill. Is it possible to just do a red bubble and not have the infill? Yeah, so what I'm assuming you're talking about um, is the automatic bubble that gets placed on our drawing, because if we unlock one of these, we can change these manually, you know, one at a time. That's going to be a lot of work. Uh, again, we're trying to make everyone's job easier, more efficient. Uh, so if we go back up to our document compare. Uh, actually, underneath the advanced settings, uh, a lot of the stuff, very advanced. You don't need to change anything. Uh, but what we are referring to is our markup colors down here at the bottom. And we could change this. If you just wanted to have a red bubble, for example, we can simply do it like this. Uh, this white square with a red line going through it means no fill. And if I have the same file up, if um let me reopen this real quick uh while i'm doing that uh so i could actually show this off properly do we have any other questions steve uh any tips for the batch pages it takes a decent amount of time to manually match each page yeah so with that one you're going to want to have all of your pages have labels on them page labels uh, that is also underneath the um, documents tab. If you want to have page labels on all of them, uh, and you could either do just the drawing name, such as EL 1.0, um, and that will allow Bluebeam to automatically look at those page labels in document one and document two and match those two together. Now, if your newer document or really either document is adding or removing pages, uh, that is something you'll have to manually match up yourself when you do that batch pages. Uh, that would be the only thing about that. Uh, so let me do this comparison real quick. So I changed my kind of kind of switching back to the first question, change the fill color to a, a blank one. Let it load real quick. I just close out of this. And here's our same result with just the just the red bubbles. Thanks. Uh, so that's how you would do that. And yeah, going back to the second question again, uh, the page labels are incredibly important for that uh, because it automatically matches both of those documents, both of those sheets together. Uh, if you just have the same, if you know it's the same document, an example I like to use again is a contract. Uh, if you get all pages of your contract back and there's not any additional pages, then you could certainly do it that way. Uh, you don't need to necessarily do the page labels uh, because it's pages one through 10 for both of them with your, you know, maybe signatures on the last page and all the other content uh, being in the same order. Um, I think that answers both of those questions. I don't know if you have any more or not. No, that's it for now. So I'll get you to share the screen back with me. Yep. There you go. So I just want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today. Uh, have our contact information up on the screen. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, either by phone call or email. We're here to help. And as mentioned earlier, please feel free to take a look at our website to learn more about the services that we offer. And thank you once again. I hope you have a great day.